everyone it's Kelly with Sew with Kelly here with another tutorial and today we're going to draw our own applique we're going to do it in an iPad app called InkPad it's a free app available I believe it's free um, if not I think it's pretty low cost um, and so I recommend it I don't know what that InkPad Pro is um, when you open up your app you'll want to hit the plus sign and then hit create and we'll have an eight and a half by eleven sheet to work from here and I'm going out and I'm getting a reference photo um, I found a, a cute one of frogs out on Google Images now I'm not replicating this exactly and so that's why it's okay for me to use it as a reference now if I made something that looked exactly like this frog I would be against the copyright of the person that took that photo so what I'm doing is I'm just resizing it I hit that resize command resizing it and I selected it and now I I'm going to turn down the transparency so it's a little bit lighter so that I can see my artwork. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to add a second layer. All right, so now we're ready to use the shape tool and go ahead and select the circle and we're going to draw out a shape for the main part of the body. We're actually going to be making the frog in different sections and going back to the select tool, the arrow that's at the top, we're able to actually select the points and morph the shape until we get it, you know, in the shape that we want it. Um, and really it's just a matter of, you know, select each point with your finger, use the little um, sidebars there to raise them up, shorten them. You'll see how it's able to tweak it um, until you get the shape that you want. And it doesn't need to be perfect because again, this is just a representation of our little frog for our applique. So, and this is the way that many illustrators work. They use a reference photo and then they use their vector illustration tools to take basic shapes and then unite them or subtract from them to get the shapes they want. Instead of just manually drawing everything, this is a real easy way to create um, shape. So dragging out a shape for the face and the head and I'm going to actually use the path tool called Unite. So I'm going to drag out our eyes here and then using my fingers I'm just going to go ahead and select all three of those shapes, the eyes and the face, and then go to Path, Unite, and then that combines them. So next we're going to go ahead and make the legs. The, these are the rear legs. I'm going to drag out an oval and again I'm going to use the select. Oh now I'm rotating and so that's that rotate tool. Again you'll just want to play with these tools until you get comfortable with them. And now I'm dragging out to see. I kind of want to kind of change the shape of the leg. I'm eh, not sure what I'm doing here yet. So I can zoom in to get a little bit more finer control. Um, there we go. So I'm going to also now drag out the foot and we're going to do that same thing where we use Path Unite. And there's also some great tools that we can use for, there's a handy tool where you can snap to grid if you want things to snap to a grid specifically. But if you don't, if you're finding things aren't tweaking the way you need to, you can go under settings, that little wheel um, right here, and you can turn off the snap to points or snap to grid and then that way you have a little bit more finer control to make the shape that you want. So we're selecting both these again and going to path unite and now we have our leg and so I'm going to select the leg and I'm going to go arrange and or first I'm going to go duplicate so I've got my copy and then I'm going to do a arrange flip horizontally and then I can put that into position over on his other side so we don't need to absolutely you know create every single element we can use copy and paste really effectively and we do that throughout this exercise so definitely play with it so now what I'm doing is his front feet and again I'm just using my own creative you know imp interpretation of the frog and I'm drawing out my shapes to just get um, an approximation and using the select tool to move them, shape the points and get my third circle in here. And then we're going to go ahead and select all of these again once I get everything into position. And we're going to go ahead, select them all and do path unite again. Now it's a little big and so I'm going to use the scale tool and just drag it down until I get it to be the size that I want and then I'm going to place it approximately where I want it and maybe just do a little bit of a rotate there so it gets a good angle and then we're going to select it again and we're going to copy it, and then we're going to flip it again and that way it will look oops, 
and sometimes you grab the points. If you do that, just use the undo button and select it. And the undo is that little arrow on the bottom toolbar. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and work on his face. I'm gonna draw out some eyeballs. And then we're going to use subtract. Once we get the eyeball placed, let's go ahead and we're gonna draw out two more circles. Oh, first I thought, well, I duplicate. I thought, oh, well, why I need I need my little whites of his eyes, the little highlight. And so I'm gonna draw a second circle and then a third circle. And then just using positioning again. Um, and then I'm going to use, not Unite, but Subtract Front. And now I've got that shine that will end up being white once we color it. And I'm placing it there and now I've got the eye. So I'm gonna select both of those shapes and then I'm gonna again do my duplicate and then flip horizontal, arrange, flip horizontal and then just grab it and put it over where I want it. Now we are gonna go ahead and use the pen tool because we have a little bit more flexibility here and could I do and you know do circles and subtract again yes I could but here's a great um, occasion where we can use that pen tool so we're just going to click and drag until we get an approximate shape and once we get that um, I saw I got an extra line so I just undid that and then using my select tool I'm going to select those points and then I'm going to adjust it till I get that curve that I want all right put approximately where we want to place it. Now I'm going to do his little nose holes and this is very similar to what we did with the eyes and I'm going to just do my shapes, get them placed, whoops, sometimes I do another shape, so then select them and do, then we'll go ahead, once you get a place to where you got it approximately, select them and do path, subtract front, and then I'm going to do the rotate tool once I get it placed over here and then just give it a little bit of an angle there we go and we're going to duplicate it and flip it horizontal I think you're starting to see a pattern here and how easily you know very quickly we're creating our own vector artwork so get his nose placed and now let's do the tongue and we'll go back and use that same pen tool and we're just going to click and drag out till we get an approximation of his tongue and again um, just tweaking that and if we want to edit the points we can by using the select tool. All right so we're done drawing our line drawing of our, of our frog. We're done with that and we can go ahead and turn off the um, we can unlock it and then we can turn off the frog image once we're done with it and by just unchecking it and then make sure you're back on and then we're going to add a layer three and what I'm doing is I'm selecting all of it because I want to copy it and and then I'm going to paste it out onto layer three. So I've got a second copy of all my work um, and I'm just zooming out so I can see my hole and then I'm pasting it. Now paste it right on top. You just grab it with your finger and drag it to the top and I'm bringing this bottom layer and I'm going to use the scale tool and I'm going to make it smaller. I'm just kind of rearranging out my page here till I get it where I want it. Because what we're going to do next after um, we get done placing this stuff is we're going to color everything. So I'm using that top one as my coloring. And going down to the color swatch, um, you just use the sliders until you get to the color that you would like. And you'll play with the sliders until you know. And then we can actually add them to the swatches once we get the color that we like. And then now I'm doing the stroke color and just doing an adjustment. And then again, I'll add that to the swatches because then when we go to color other items, we could just select from our swatch panel and then hit plus to add that swatch. So it's a great place to do that. So we've gotten the whole body already all colored, which is awesome. And now we're just gonna go ahead and fill in the head and then um, switch over to stroke select um, the stroke color that we want and it looks like I accidentally um, did not do the right color so I'm in stroke and I don't want that I want I want my fill and then I'm selecting the right color and now we're good to go so now I'm going to zoom in and we're going to color the face so select the mouth and I already have a black swatch so I'm selecting that select the click on the um, tongue 
I don't have a red, so again, I'm going to use the sliders until I get a nice red color that I like. And then I'll hit the swatches panel again and click the plus button to add that to the swatches. All right. There it is. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and do the nose and the eyes. And so each one will just go ahead and select the item and then do a fill. Once you get playing, there's also gradients, there's shadows, there's all sorts of different things. But this was just to get us started um, playing with doing our basic appliques, which is awesome. And so doing the white shine of his eyes and then the black, and we'll go ahead and finish up on this side. All right. I really hope you, you'll um, share what you've done. You can go out to my blog or my Facebook page. So with Kelly, look me up there and definitely um, like my page and then post and show me what you've created in Inkpad. I would love to see it. Very, very fun. All right. So for those folks that want to use their designs here in Inkpad to digitize, what I'm going to show you next is I'm kind of taking each of these different different um, drawings here, our line drawing and our color drawing, and I'm going to make them smaller and just get them down to the bottom. Um, so we have a reference so that once we do save out this to our Dropbox um, account that we've set up to link to Inkpad, um, then we can um, we can actually separate our elements so that once we bring it into Stitch Artist, it's a little bit easier for us to digitize each um, part of the frog. So that's going to hopefully be a second video if you guys are interested. Definitely let me know in the comments on the Stitch Artist Facebook page if you would like to see how um, I actually digitize the frog. So all right so what I'm doing next is I'm just taking my I took a copy of that line drawing and I'm separating it out into be its um, individual pieces that I would digitize and in the order that I would want them. So starting up in the upper left hand corner and going down, um, this is how um, I'm kind of breaking apart my work because that's half the uh, challenge with digitizing. Our embroidery is planning our work and so if we do that while we're creating our artwork, um, I think it's going to be great. And then we can actually bring this whole ping into um, Stitch Artist and use it to do. But what I'm doing, like I say, is I'm separating each of these pieces and I'm just kind of getting them you know, placed out onto my page here so that uh, I can work with them. So the body would be first because that's going to be applique and then I would do the head next and then the legs because the legs are going to be on top of the body and then and really actually the legs would go first and then the body well, however that you would like to do the look i have them placed in front of the body so we'll go with that and then i'm bringing the face down so the applique pieces are the body the head the legs and the feet and now i'm using my text tool um, and this was this is another good clue clue for you to um, go ahead and just put in that this is my applique one and then you can copy and paste the text, put applique two, applique three, and so you know the order in which to digitize them. And so that's what I'm just showing you here is just kind of go ahead and put your text. I was kind of fiddling with where do I want to put the text and that kind of thing. And, and you can change the text um, settings by clicking on that A, and then you click the actual text tool to be able to type in. So you can just choose whatever fonts are on your um, iPad or what you can use there. So, so I'm just labeling everything and I won't, you know, I'm not going to label everything here in the video. I'm just kind of giving you that idea. And so the next idea would be the face and the mouth. Those are all going to be fills. So they're not actually applique, but that's going to be actually fill stitches. And so I'm saying that I'm putting fill black and then, um, you know, just typing that in and bringing that down and placing it by the actual um, pages. And I accidentally selected text a couple of times when I didn't want to. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of those, delete them out, um, cut them, cut it, edit, cut. So all of these different functionality, it really, it just takes go ahead and play. There was that good summary video, um, and I'll put a link to that too, um, that shows like all the functionality of Inkpad. Um, definitely go check out that video 
and, and I'm just selecting all the shapes now and making them black because when I save this peg and I bring it into Stitch Artist, I want a very strong outline so that I can use the magic wand tool um, to select those shapes and then, you know, easily digitize it from there. So, and we'll show that um, in that second video if you guys want to see it, how I actually digitize from here. So using this image. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and fill these in. And once I'm done, and you're saying, you know, Kelly, the mouth is red, but I'm just making everything black. Um, and then I will have put my notes in. So at the end of the video here, I'll show you the actual final result, the one that I, um, I'm going to end up using. And then I'm just clicking back out here and, um, and giving it a name. I want to actually name the document. So you just click on the name and then we can go ahead and type in what we want to call it. This ink pad is also great to, you know, do practice quilting designs. I have a video out on YouTube about that. And also to create other shapes that you can use for, you know, hexes, those kinds of things. So whatever, you, you know, shapes that you need, you can use it and then you can bring it into your silhouette studio software and, and cut things with your um, studio. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, um, I've already set up my Dropbox and you'll see I've got some older files out there too, but it just takes a while for it to go ahead and upload there. And now it's available so that once you are done, um, you're able to go ahead and bring it out to the save it and then you would go to your computer you would go to dropbox and download that so you have it there on your computer and then you would open up in stitch artist and then start the digitizing from there or you could open it up in your silhouette cameo and trace your shapes from there too and, and create a, a paper cut file too so for those paper crafters that are watching this video you can do that so all right i think that's it thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoy inkpad and if you have any questions go ahead and comment below or comment on the stitch artist addicts our facebook page there or just go ahead on over to my blog or facebook page and give me comments there i appreciate it i really do enjoy hearing from you and i hope you subscribe thanks so much